All right, welcome back or welcome to the garage. It's Tush coming at you. We are about to start another small project on the 1981 Alfa Romeo Spider. As mentioned in my previous video, the next job we are probably going to do was to do the, I call them axle limit straps, uh, but in actuality, if you order the part, they're going to tell you they're rebound straps. These are from Classic Alpha. There's a set of uh, two here, so there's two straps per side. We also have the uh, rebound strap fitting kit. And there's the part number. I think that's the part number, SU076, the rebound strap fitting kit. There is the actual uh, part number for the straps themselves, SU075. And then we have the, uh, I call these bump stops. Uh, I'm not sure what they call them uh, at Classic Alva, Alpha, but if we uh, just grab a flashlight here, and I'm charging back up. Let's grab our flashlight really quick. We'll take a look at the rear of the car, what the stock setup looks like before we get into it. So here we are at the rear of the car, and there is the bump stop there. And there are the stock limit straps, rebound straps, whatever you want to call them. So they're attached by a series of a couple of bolts and plates. I did uh, get out here yesterday and spray those with some penetrating oil. So hopefully they'll come off okay. So I'm hoping this won't be a very long job, but you never know. Sometimes the fasteners can be a pain. I'm a little worried about the two. It looks like there's two large Phillips screws holding these uh, uh, rubber buffers in up the top here, so hopefully they're not seized in there. If they aren't, it should be a fairly quick and easy job, but uh, let's get to work and see how bad or how good this is gonna be. Okay, just about to start removing these uh, four fasteners on the uh, passenger side, and they are 10 millimeter, and it looks like they are holding a plate on each side to keep those two straps together. So um, I'm assuming that you could just cut these if you really wanted to quickly remove them, but we're not going to do that. I prefer to disassemble versus destroy. So we are going to break out the uh, 10 millimeter socket and uh, we will undo those fasteners and uh, drop the strap down and then we'll release it from the top. It's in held at the top here, as I mentioned, by that uh, rubber bumper block uh, with I think a couple of big Phillips screws but we'll see when we get there once we get a little bit more clearance to be able to get up there to get at them so let's undo these fasteners first and uh, we'll see what we see all right feeling like a bit of an idiot as you can see you only really need to undo the either two of the fasteners to get the straps to separate so we've got the top two undone and of course that's released the strap um, so we'll move on to the next step which is attempting to get to these top fasteners. I'll get down on the ground and have a look up and see what we see up there and uh, hopefully we have good access to be able to get to what we need to. A little dark there for you. Sorry. A little dark for me too. Alright, just having a look from below the car and there are those big screws. One on each side that we need to remove. I haven't attempted it yet. Just wanted to make note of the run of these straps. There is a little bracket that these straps need to run through. So obviously you need to tuck them in behind. It's kind of hard for me to hold the light and for you to be able to see this, but this bracket here, you want to make sure that the straps go in behind that bracket and not over it and against the uh, brake cable. All right, I think I jinxed myself on this project. so. I knew that those Phillips head screws are going to be very hard to get out just based, the, based in the position that they're in and all of the road grime and debris that they'd get into them. And the fact that they're a Phillips, I figured they'd probably be seized in there and I'm right. So I've tried to heat them, no success. I've tried uh, big screwdrivers with wrenches on them for some leverage, piece of pipe for some leverage, no success. Tried an impact driver, where's my impact driver? Over here. I don't know if you can see that or not. There's my impact driver. Pretty hard to uh, swing a hammer up there to use an impact driver, but that's not working. So what we're going to try to do now is I got my Dremel out. We're going to try to cut a slot in it and use a big flathead screwdriver. If that doesn't work, we're just going to grind that completely off and then we'll have to find a new fastener. So I'm not giving up. Probably a lot of guys would just say screw it and put back what was there, but uh, I'm not that guy. So we're going to move forward and we are going to tackle this problem. 
Okay, so we've got uh, the buffer and the mounting piece. Now, I think this might be aluminum. It's either aluminum or pot metal. But again, kind of a poor design as far as I'm concerned from Alfa Romeo. I don't want to hate on, on them, but uh, that clearly was going to be rusted in there and be problematic. So we've gone the head of the bolt off. I'm now hoping to be able to grab that with a pair of vice grips and get that out. Last thing I want to do, again, I don't want to jinx myself, but the last thing I want to do is break that bolt off and have to drill it out. It's kind of a tough place to get to. So I'm hoping that uh, that bolt is going to turn out now with a pair of vice grips. It should. So let's be positive, and then we can move on to the next step. All right, maybe a little bit better representation of how this is assembled with the uh, new bump stop in place, obviously with all the other old components not cleaned up yet. So bump stop, that uh, aluminum or pot metal plate, then the strap, and then this little keeper plate at the top, and then it has the two uh, Phillips uh, bolts that go up through and into the bodywork. And again, of course, the straps are joined here with the metal plates uh, on this back side of the uh, strap, so that would fit in the car. This is on the passenger side, so that would fit in the car like that. Now I'm trying to get my mind around why they'd actually install Phillips screws back here versus just a regular hex headed bolt. There's no way that this bump stop is going to compress enough that it's going to actually get in the way of the hex headed bolt. So I'm thinking of just um, you know putting hex headed bolts back in here. They are not countersunk or the new plates are not countersunk so it's not like the uh, the heads of the screws are going to be countersunk sunk up in there anyway. So I think that we're just going to go with some new hardware and just use some bolts. And not to belabor the point, but uh, you can see the old buffer on the inside here and you can see that that's countersunk and on the new one it is not. So again, I don't think there's really a reason for me not to use just regular uh, hex headed metric bolts there uh, in place of the uh, countersunk Phillips screw. All right, it's a new day out in the garage and uh, Yesterday we were a little frustrated uh, trying to get the old uh, rebound strap off the car and uh, I did actually a little bit of research when I went in the house last night because I was looking to see what size the fasteners were for this and I'm not an alpha expert so I'm not really aware of this but apparently this is a well-known problem on these cars with this block which is actually aluminum. I said it might be pot metal or aluminum. It is aluminum. So apparently this is a well-known issue for, issue for these bolts that go through the uh, rebound or the buffer into the block, through the strap, then into the car, uh, that they corrode not only to the car, but actually can seize within the actual block itself. So lots of horror stories out there about trying to get these off a car. So uh, I can imagine because I've had good, ex uh, good experience with this car and I've, I've sort of marveled at how well the fasteners come off this car. So this is really the only one that's really given me a lot of grief and I can see why. So anyway, long story short, I managed to find uh, what hardware I need to reinstall that since I had to grind off one of the uh, bolts to get it out. There it is, there's the culprit there. And we figured out that they were <clears throat> M8 uh, 1.25, which is the, uh, the thread pitch by 60 mil. So I was determined not to go back with a, I believe this is called, well, I keep calling it a Phillips, but I think the proper term might be pan head screw. And again, it's countersunk. And I sort of asked the question, I think at the end of yesterday's video, why couldn't I just go to a, you know, a hex headed uh, regular bolt style or a set screw? And I did get some answers that apparently quite uh, normal and a lot of people will do the replacement. They won't go back with this style, that's for sure. Most will go with a upgraded uh, hex headed bolt, something you can easily get on and off with a, uh, with a uh, socket, for example, or a ratchet. So I went one further than that. I actually ended up getting some socket head cap screws in stainless steel. So this will give me a good purchase for the next guy that wants to get those straps changed out 40 years from now, we'll make sure we put some anti-seize on here so we can get those out to exchange these straps. So again, uh, M8 1.25 by 60 millimeter. This is a socket head cap screw 
and that should do that perfectly in that application. So, all right, so we're going to go ahead, we're going to clean things up a little bit, and then we're going to get this reinstalled on the passenger side before we obviously try to work on the driver's side. Who knows how the driver's side is going to treat me. It could be another uh, problem with getting those uh, pan head screws out. Sometimes you get lucky. We'll see. I think I did make one mistake that I'd like to correct before I go on yesterday when I was talking about this top plate. I believe I had the top plate which goes on the strap like this. I think I had it in this orientation, but that's not correct. It's actually in a downward position like this. So it sort of matches the contour of the strap going down. So I just wanted to correct that in case I did actually uh, video this assembly incorrectly. All right, we've got our new components ready to go. So the strap kit comes with two different size straps. So there's a longer and a shorter. And obviously, well, maybe it's not so obvious, but you need one long and one short for each side. The shorter obviously will go on the inside. The longer will go on the outside to make up the extra length from having to be on the outside of the short strap. So we're going to put that together along with our new block and our little top piece there. We do have the other hardware standing by, which is for the plates to lock the straps together. So we'll add that once these are back on the car. So let's go ahead and reassemble this and get it close to putting back on the car. All right, guys, there's what our new assembly is going to look like. We've just got it uh, loosely put together. and Obviously, we'll bolt it onto the car. Now we've got our anti-seize standing by. So we'll make sure we coat the tops of those with anti-seize before we screw them back into the body tub. So we'll come back and we'll talk about the uh, fasteners for the actual straps once we get these on the car, or once we get this assembly on the car. All right, here's the little kit that's going to uh, attach the two straps together. So just a couple of plates on either side, and then the hardware to bolt that up. Just some locked lock washers, nuts, and bolts to do that. So uh, we're gonna do that now. We've got the strap assembled on the car. It's looking good. And remember to pull the straps up through that bracket that I talked about earlier on the back. Make sure they're on the correct side, so inside of the bracket and close to the axle. So we'll go ahead and we'll fit up those plates now and we'll come back for one last look of the passenger side complete. All right, under the car and there's the uh, straps installed under that bracket that I was talking about. So that's fed up there correctly and we have everything tightened up up here now so all is good to go all looks good so we'll now move on to the driver's side and see how much of a trouble that's going to give us all right guys quick look at the driver's side and um, you can see that the bolts here are the opposite of how i've done them on the other side and i look at this side for reference and the reason i decided to put the uh, nuts on the outside as you can see how close they are to actually hitting the bump stop, I think you can probably see that, how close they are to hitting the bump stop when the uh, axle is at its full travel. So I figured by putting the, uh, the, the longer part of the bolt on the outside that would probably be better. It wouldn't come in contact with the bump stop. So that's why I decided to do it on the other side, the opposite direction of this. Anyway, we'll go ahead and we will uh, endeavor to get the straps off first, then the block, and uh, we'll do our best to uh, not fight it too much and then we'll uh, hopefully successfully come back with an update in a little bit saying that I got those fasteners out of the top block with no issues whatsoever. Let's try to stay positive. Well how boring is that? Absolutely no drama getting the uh, driver's side off. So you learn a little bit as you go. Um, so I actually grabbed my big bit out of my um, impact driver and uh, put it on a ratchet and uh, that was able to give me a bit more leverage and a bit more purchase on those bolts versus you know a big uh, screwdriver with a wrench on the shaft so I don't think it probably would have helped me on the other side you never know it might have would have helped maybe a little bit but uh, anyway that seems to be the way to go to be able to get those off it does uh, get a little bit tight with the buffer there in the way to be able to get the uh, the uh, socket up there with the uh, bit installed but I was able to do it and gave it a little pressure on sideways pressure on the buffer to get that lined up with the bolt so anyway we'll get this cleaned up and we'll reinstall like we did for the other side I'll come back when we're done on this side alright the driver's side uh, assembly is just about to go on don't forget the uh, anti-seize 
And uh, you want to put that on the entire length of the bolt because a lot of the times it'll seize actually in the aluminum block here. So we'll pull this bolt out, coat it with uh, anti-seize, put it back in. Just don't want to get it all over the place while I'm holding it. Um, and one other tip is to put this uh, top assembly uh, linkage on. Uh, it makes it a little bit easier. Uh, it can go on now, so you may as well put it on as opposed to trying to struggle with it a little bit uh, when it's on the car. So you've only got basically the lower link to do up and you're good to go. So any sees and we'll get this assembly put back where it's supposed to be. Alright guys, the driver's side is now done. So uh, much easier having some practice on the uh, passenger side and it's nice that the uh, top fasteners didn't fight me so that didn't take too long at all compared to the other side. Alright, we'll wrap this project up and uh, we'll call it done and we'll move on to another project. I'm not sure what that project will be. Uh, probably might be adjusting the door glass which is not necessarily a job I'm looking forward to but uh, we'll get into that project probably next. Um, the door glass is actually running up too high so there needs to be a stop adjustment done on the glass which means the door panels have to come back off again. So uh, not looking forward to that job but it's something that needs to be done on both the driver's and passenger side. So I'm not sure what I'm quite getting myself into. I've done a little bit of research. Um, so we'll find out a little bit more when we get into that project. We'll learn as we go. Although I kind of have an idea what I'm getting myself into. So like I said, that'll probably be the next project we tackle is the uh, door glass height. And there's a few other jobs I need to do. I want to re-bleed the uh, clutch. Um, if you remember when I delivered this car to dock early last, or spring, or sorry, late last spring, early summer, um, I, the last one of the last things I had done was install a new clutch master and uh, we did bleed it at that point in time but I want to do another bleed job on it. Uh, Doc has experienced a little bit of grinding in reverse especially. Uh, I did trap, uh, top up the trans fluid which was down probably about uh, a little less than half a liter so that's going to help but uh, these cars are kind of known I guess a little bit for uh, having some weak synchros uh, particularly in first and reverse. So we'll see if we can make that a little bit better by bleeding the uh, Clutch Master first before going on and uh, exploring other avenues to correct that. So anyway, I think the next job will be, like I said, door glass uh, height, and uh, then we'll go from there. All right, so we'll clean up the tools, shut down the garage, and uh, we'll get back out here probably tomorrow. It's supposed to be a snow day tomorrow. So we'll see how we do as far as uh, freezing rain and snow overnight. But. Uh, We'll get out in the garage after work regardless and like I said we'll probably start that door glass project. And until then, thanks for watching, thanks for commenting, thanks for subscribing. See you then.